Good afternoon and welcome to the Market Wrap for APW week ending 5th of November 2021, Guy Fawkes Day. Stuart Williamson here at the helm. Right, this week we're going to talk about uh, the future for the UK residential market 2022 and beyond. So what is out there and what's in the, the pipeline, so to speak. Is it a cliff edge, as some people would suggest, or is it going to be plain sailing? So basically we did a lot of research this week, looking around the different market reports, what are they saying for 2022. Um, Zoopla, Savills, Knight Frank, uh, Ricks, as well as a variety of independent sources, um, state agents and the like. And we've got both positive and negative possibilities for 2022. On the positive side, the housing, housing remains affordable in many markets. Competition amongst lenders is still intense. And when mortgage rates increase, it becomes even more intense. There's continued scarcity of homes for sale, and that will continue well into 2022 and beyond until the government starts building more houses, basically. The impact of the pandemic still has further to run, more mileage in that. And these factors are going to be supported by the scale of the financial gains made by homeowners so far, and the amount of people who are willing to take advantage of that and sell their homes and will it also so therefore bring sellers into the market on the negative side we've got increases in the cost of living we've got high levels of inflation we've got tax increases that will be coming in for sure i mean at the moment it's the highest tax rates in the uk for 70 years i think it's going to get worse uh, the, there will be a rise in mortgage rates in 22 and that will impact household buying power the main market challenges that we believe are unrealistic expectations on pricing on the part of new sellers and the lack of homes. So they're also negatives as well as positives. There's still good upside in most affordable markets. Okay, how do we measure that? We look at the house price to earnings ratio. Zoopla said there is headroom for further above average house price growth in the regions outside, in, outside of southern England. However, in London, they say affordability levels may have improved by about 10% since 2016. They still remain well above the long-term average, and this will continue to limit level of price rises in the highest value areas of London and the south of England in 2022 and beyond. Okay, what about the pandemic effect? Weirdly enough, 22% of UK households surveyed by Zoopla we're eager to move in the next 18 months as a direct result of the pandemic. That's 22%. That's quite a lot. It is varying from age groups. So young people are a lot more likely to want to move. Young families, as opposed to baby boomers, people like myself, um, who actually remember who Guy Fawkes was, uh, are not so keen. So the pandemic impact continues. The primary effects will be ongoing re-evaluation of housing needs. So that's what people will be reassessing. And they'll be doing that because they've got more value in their houses. So be able to sell and move on to nicer places and movement in parts of the labor force are now going over to hybrid working there's a good term for you hybrid working okay what about the effect of mortgage rates will it go higher for sure they'll be higher uh, and that'll affect buying power and activity more than prices that seems to be the general view so you know prices won't go down because mortgage rates go up but people consider what they're doing more Low mortgage rates have become basically a, a feature of the housing market over the last decade and have supported, you know, house price rises. And if they go up, you know, many people may say, oh, Zuta Law, you know, it's GFC all over again, 20% fall. It's important to note on this that the regulation of mortgage lending from 2014 onwards has stopped lower borrowing costs from creating unsustainable booms in house price markets. That's what Zupla says. The market is better insulated for higher mortgage rates in the past, but obviously it's not immune from it. And if you look at some of the charts we're posting, hopefully on, with the video here, you'll see that they're being stress tested borrowers actually at a lot higher rates than they're actually borrowing at. I think it's about 3% more. Uh, and the chart does show you that. Super surveyed economy, a super survey of economists also indicated they believe house prices, um, sorry, interest rates will go up. Uh, central banks aim to scale back on the support for the economy and look to normalise interest rates and manage inflation. So as we've said before, APW, we believe rates will reach 
by the end of 2022, which is the highest level from 2015, but still very low. I mean, I remember back in the 80s at one stage, it went up to about 14%, so it's still very low. Uh, so firstly, it's all about how they impact new buyer demand. And secondly, how will that impact the existing 11 million mortgage homeowners in the UK? Basically, any increase in borrowing costs impacts the buying power of new purchases, but that will all depend on how much the rates go up, obviously. And as we were saying, 3%, we don't think, and neither do the marketplace we've surveyed, we don't think that 3% will have a bigger impact and that house prices will continue and people will still be willing to pay that. But an increase in rates could deter some buyers. It won't deter sellers, okay? And it won't deter, but it may affect what they're willing to, people are willing to buy, pay. So that's why sellers have to be realistic but it may deter some of the buyers and will impact sales. Existing borrowers, you know, are very much insulated to, to a large extent from this because over 80% of the outstanding mortgages in the UK are actually fixed, and I didn't know that, for five years or more. Okay, and as I said earlier, other people who are going to the market now since 2014 have been stress tested with a mortgage rate up to I believe it is six or seven percent. So this gives is additional resilience for existing borrowers, makes them uh, less likely to panic or less likely to have problems with rates going up. So what were the hottest markets in, in the UK in 2022? Based on affordability, post-COVID strength, demand and location. It basically says average house prices will increase by 3% in general, but certain areas will go up by far more, which is the Northwest and the Midlands, which is the, what the diagram indicates. However, any national average will always have a variation at sector and geographical level. And, you know, we've seen this with housing hotspots such as Cardiff, Swansea, the Oxford, Cambridge, Arc, all of being supported by different economic factors. And we're seeing how the fact around the airports are suffering uh, down towards Gatwick, they've got 10% less employment. These post-COVID locations, the hotspots, got 15% or more employment and pay rises. In addition, the growth rate between flats and houses will continue to widen. It did do over 2021, and it will continue uh, as flats remain weaker over 2022. But post that, as the whole market starts to normalise again, post-pandemic, we see it returning more to normal in the longer term. So overall, are we going to go off a cliff edge? Is it going to be plain sailing? Um, the outlook for 2022 is good. It's positive. It's not that good for London and the South East because that is overvalued. And that's why you only get 3% more you know, rents down there, yield on your rents. Whereas in the rest of the country, we're looking at five and a half to six, which is the holy grail for buy to let. So therefore look outside of the South East and potentially the South West. It's going to return to normality over the the next coming years, it's still a good buying opportunity. Thanks very much. Cheerio.